We finished off last video with a flow meter that didn't really seem to like to have flow go through it. Um, this video will be exploring what I did to solve that problem. So initially starting out, I thought it was the impellers. So I ended up designing a brand new impeller using some more basic design principles. I wanted a good baseline design for testing, something that was fairly simple, fairly standard. Uh, so this is what I ended up with. It features two blades and a fairly conservative pitch angle. So after it was done printing out, I installed it on the boat's prop shaft and gave it a quick spin. All seemed good, so it was time to move on to the water. So once I put it in the water, I thought, ah, perfect, problem solved. But that introduced its own new problem. Now I was getting enough flow that, uh, as you can see, it was actually leaking between where the nozzle and the boat were actually put together. So I only had two screws holding the nozzle on at the time. So I thought, okay, okay well, I'll put four in and give it another try. For a while, I got all four in, so we'll see. It might still leak. Might have to but unfortunately, even after I put in all four screws, uh, we still had a bunch of leaking out of the side. So it was time for me to come up with another solution. About half throttle and some actual pressures being made. Let's see. Okay, I'm gonna print it with concentric lines to hope that maybe the water will get trapped in them. This probably won't work, but we'll find out. So my first attempt was printing out gaskets out of TPU. I did a few tries, but I could never get my printer to print really over a few layers tall. Oh no! Yeah, that's what I expected. I'm gonna turn the speed down more again, and then I'm gonna turn the flow up again. 120. We'll see if that works. Hmm. Third try was not the charm. Even though the print was far from perfect, I cleaned it up a bit and I decided I was gonna give it a try. Okay, so I'm gonna make a prediction that just based off the fact that I can see some wave in the seal that I printed, it's probably not thick enough and it probably won't work, but we're gonna give it a try anyways. If it doesn't work, I'll go get some O-rings from the store. And my prediction was correct. It still leaked, so I decided that I was gonna focus on some other stuff that had been bugging me from the test and go buy some O-rings when I had a chance. Fix the vibration. Okay, so here's my current hypothesis. I think that my pump design is too bad uh, and it's not able to make enough pressure to overcome how small this hole is. So just to confirm this, I'm going to take a look with this nozzle. If the performance is de decent with a wider, bigger nozzle, I might still stick with this design, but if not, then I might reprint this uh, back third section, or sorry, quarter section here uh, to a new print with a better uh, pump design. So we'll see. Okay, so as you can see here, I mean, with this bigger nozzle, I'm getting a lot of flow. So I think that we're just choking the back pressure uh, too much with that flow tester. So I'm gonna design a different flow tester that uses two different ones to essentially expand the amount that's there. And we'll see if that actually ends up working out. So it turns out that those nozzle gaskets worked actually a little better than I thought. And what was happening was is that the pumps weren't being primed and I couldn't get the air out to actually start the pump successfully. I thought at the time that it was because the nozzle diameter was too tight. So yeah, with this false hypothesis, I made this big Y splitter to try and solve my problems. And in addition to making the Y splitter, I was trying to fix a problem where the Arduino would disconnect. So I wanted to rebuild the whole circuit and I had to rewrite the code. All right, we've changed the code now so that it in has both of the flow meters to calculate the flow. Um, so I'm just gonna spend a bit of time to get the uh, throttle percentage to work because right now I just have it printing the, uh, well, servo degrees position uh, from 
there, but we're gonna change that so that it gives me a percentage so I can make a nice graph percentage versus flow rate for each of the impellers. Okay, the code is fixed and ready to go. So now all I need to do is uh, put this horrible contraption into here and I'm gonna need to use some hot glue because I overestimated how much uh, clearance I needed. So this is the biggest tragedy. Just about to fit the Pronginator 3000 and uh, I didn't notice but the printing curled up on the edges so I gotta do go do another one. <laughs> Uh, uh, <laughs> okay, the flow meter is on <laughs> and it looks ridiculous. We're recording there too? Okay, we're gonna try the tester now. Let's see if the nozzle flow problem is fixed. So this is with the two bladed impeller. Okay. So the initial test I thought, ah oh, great, problem solved, but it was mostly because I actually forgot to put the gasket in. You can see the leaking there. Uh, so the pump was able to prime itself. That was the only difference. Uh, but at the time, you know, I thought that the Progulator 3000 actually fixed my problems. So after I saw that leaking that was occurring, I put the nozzle gasket that I printed back in just to try it again. Okay, boat is set back up, computer is ready, so we're gonna go again now. I've set it with the new program and the gasket uh, on the jet, so we'll see how that works. If that doesn't work, I'm gonna go by O-rings, um, but the program should work on this new Arduino and it should run three times on its own. So <laughs> we'll see, and hopefully the data is somewhat close uh, between each run, so. Alright, so. so with these gaskets uh, in between the nozzle and the back of the boat, we actually ended up inadvertently sealing off the pump so that the air couldn't get out, and the pumps were just sitting there without a prime. And if the pump isn't primed, then it's not going to move any water. Still ended up actually getting O-rings because I thought it was an unrelated issue, but that's okay. But in typical fashion, we got really distracted because we had some friends come over and we toured around Vancouver area, Victoria, all those places. Uh, so that was pretty fun, but definitely was a distraction from the project. Once everything got back to a bit more of a normal, I designed new nozzles that would accommodate those O-rings that I bought and also added a stator just so that the flow would be traveling in a uniform direction. Of course, now I know that the gaskets actually worked a little better than I thought, but still the O-rings were a bit, a bit more of a complete solution anyways, so I ended up going with those. Oh yeah, and to try to fix that priming issue, I added a little segment that would uh, prime the pumps before each run. This of course didn't really work. I was so confused, my, my seal on the nozzles was good, but I just didn't really think about why the pumps weren't working. I sat there and I struggled with it and I fought with it for hours and did tons and tons of runs and didn't understand. I thought that the pump design was just bad. I thought that there was something seriously wrong with the impellers, like tons and tons of different stuff. Again, turns out that it's just that now that I had a good seal on the nozzle, I was trapping air inside of the pumps. And when the pump isn't primed, the pump can't run. So that ended up being the thing that I fixed in the final iteration of the nozzle design. And I forgot to record it, but I ended up frying the Arduino that I put inside. It was a Mega. I switched the Uno to a Mega and then ended up filling the boat up with water and frying it. So the boat was leaking between the sections, so I took every single component out and decided to give it another hose down with a different type of sealant, but basically the same as the flex seal I used before. While the new nozzle was printing, I decided I was also going to rewire the whole thing using a bit more of a permanent solution. So I put the Arduino inside of a Tupperware container just to make sure that it wouldn't ever get wet. Uh, and then also moved all the breadboard components in there too. 
I didn't like before how if I'd accidentally bump a component or mess with a wire, it would unplug and just be a whole mess. So my makeshift solution to the issue was adding a hole at the top, and that just allows me to fill the pumps with water, and it turns out that that actually ended up working. Okay, so we have everything on and ready to go. Um, I just filled the jet up pretty easily. Now with the new nozzle design, it's a lot better. And uh, yeah, we'll start to run our tests again. Hopefully I fixed everything now and this should just work. Hopefully. And that's the end of this video. <laughs> In the next one, we'll go over the actual data from those tests and hopefully we can try to optimize the impeller perfectly. Thanks for watching.